Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Six News. Today we're going to go over the brand new attacker in Rainbow Six Siege and she is called Ram. And I expect this operator to come in at any soft entrance on your rear, so watch out. And her special gadget is this little kind of tank thing that looks like it honestly came out of Robot Wars and it is just a little destruction box. So this thing is bulletproof but not explosive proof and it rolls across the ground very slowly it's not controllable after it's been launched but you can choose from three preset paths you either have straight on turn slightly to the left or turn slightly to the right and this thing will chew through all soft surfaces in its path the walls floors deployable shields even also shields as well it will affect attacker gadgets and anything else that it gets in contact with and I would say that this thing has been designed for vertical play, clearing ceilings. However, you can totally use it just attacking the site directly because it'll destroy any gadget nearby within like a half meter radius. So I'll take out frost traps, Azami barricades, I'll even go through laser walls and keep trucking. So this thing's certainly got a lot of options. So it's basically just a kill dozer in miniature form. It will also affect you physically too if you get in contact with it. It'll do a little bit of damage, but not nearly as much. Which is real pay. It would have been fun if this thing was cutting off limbs. However, this gadget is only capable of destroying soft targets. So, for instance, if you go up against a reinforced wall or just a normal solid wall, nothing will happen. And when it comes to castle, there's two different ways. So, if you were just to roll this thing up to a castle barricade that is on a door, it'll just punch right through, no problem. But if you try throwing it at a window where it normally goes right through the wooden barricade, it'll just bounce off the castle barricade and drop to the ground, which means it's not really useful for going, say, through a castle barricade window, but perfectly good for going through a castle barricade door. And overall, this is an operator that is very interesting. This is not what I expected from a Rainbow Six Siege operator, but I'm so far quite loving her. Now, she does have a big downside, so let's go through her loadout. So, primary weapons are the R4C, the LMG E. Both of these can be equipped with 1.5 or the 2X. Secondary weapons are the Ita 12S shotgun and the MK1 9mm and then for secondary gadgets she has stun grenades or secondary hard breach. And that brings us to the big downside of this operator which is that she is a 1 speed 3 health operator. So I think that will cut her out of a big chunk of the player base right now and especially with the TDM meta I could see this operator not getting chosen that often but we will have to see. And then swinging back around let's talk about what may be overpowered about this operator and I think that is just her destruction capability. So right off the bat, she's got this drone that's capable of destroying a huge amount of surfaces and that will become tactically very, of course, powerful. But she also has a secondary shotgun. So she's going to be able to do big destruction and little destruction. Then she also has a secondary hard breach as well. And I feel like honestly, this operator might just have a little bit too much kind of utility when it comes to destruction. I don't know if she needs the secondary hard breach. I don't know if she really needs a secondary shotgun. Now, all those things are good and they're not a downside to her at all. They're probably making her very powerful. But I do wonder if it's just a little bit too much capability in the destruction side of things. But let's have a little chat about our counters, which is not many. So first of all, mute jammers are useful against this drone, but only in the initial activation phase. So when she throws the drone down, she then has to press a button to activate it. And if there's a signal disruptor there, she will not be able to activate it. However, once it's going, I basically think of this thing as like a wind up toy. It's not really electronic switch. So that will just drive right through a mute jammer and wreck it, no problem. Because once it's going, there's not really any computer components doing anything on board this drone. It's just driving in either a straight line or slightly to the left or slightly to the right. And as such, nothing stops it. Even Mozzie's Pest as well will not actually do anything with this drone. Which I do think is a pity. I would love to see Mozzie just driving this thing around. To be honest, I would quite like for him to jump on top of it and just ride it around. That would be hilarious. And then for simple destruction of this drone, it's got a big red canister on the back, so you can shoot that as a defender. Of course, you got to be behind it to take it out, or you can hit it with impact grenades or a nitro cell if you're able to get it off. But of course, a nitro cell close to this thing will be destroyed, so you're going to have to be perfectly timing it. And this thing is going to shape up some defensive strategies for sure, because any strat right now that involves a deployable shield and maybe a smoke behind it, is going to be able to have this drone just drive straight up and bust up the deployable shield with smoke literally having nothing in his inventory to deal with it 
whatsoever. So he'll have to have a friend with some impact grenades nearby. Only problem is, this girl somehow carries four of these drones. So she will be able to use brute force to get through any path she wants. Now the first reaction I've seen from all the people that I got to see this new operator with alongside all had the same initial reaction, why bring Buck or Sledge if you've got this up here? And I would say it's quantity over quality. With Sledge and Buck, they can put very tactical holes where they need them. This girl makes too many holes, too many lines of sights, and that can of course be taken advantage of, and you can control it, you can shoot your own drone to reduce the amount of holes you make in a floor, but overall I feel like she's a little bit too much and that'll make her very hard to learn and use well. However, once you get used to her and just set up some great strategies to use her drone and to plow through what would normally be a very safe defense for defenders or even taking out a bunch of K-bar barriers from Azami, you're gonna be in a very powerful place with this drone and I think it's gonna be fun. The other aspect is the noise it makes. It is extremely loud. And I thought Malusi's Banshees were actually going to be an annoying gadget when they were introduced. This thing is about 10 times as loud and that may be very useful tactically because you could deploy this on the other side of the map from where you're going in. You can just have it sitting there and as soon as you're actually at your proper breach point that you plan to go in, you can activate it. It makes a ton of noise and they won't even hear you coming in from the other side of the objective. And because she has four of them, I think she's definitely going to be useful. But my problem here is she going to be kind of on the same level as Flores where yeah he's useful but he doesn't really get played a hell of a lot and I could see this girl easily being on Flores' kind of level because he can as well push up and take down deployable shields and stuff like that but his drone is more vulnerable but of course smaller and he's not a one speed. Now here's a quick example of how much vertical lines of sight this girl can open in just 20 seconds and I'll also leave the audio on full so you can hear what the drone sounds like. So yeah, she might well be a slow girl and her drones may seem quite slow as well when they're moving, but my god, in 20 seconds she can completely open up every defender to being shot at from above. But anyway, let me know what you think of the new operator RAM in the comments below. And I've also included some teaser videos of some of the upcoming changes with this season as well. So there's changes to Fuse, Legion and plenty of secret changes that you'll see in other videos on this channel and the 6 News channel. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.